Hi. Gonna give it a minute, see who shows up. Chris Wilkes, hi. Oh, Casey, Amory, hi, Karen, Jess, cousin Michael. Hi, everyone. Melissa, hi, Jess. Um, so welcome to Fun with Fine Lines. I'm Amy Solomon. I'm just gonna wait. Hi, Anne. Special shout out to Kiri, who might be joining later. She has a music lesson online, which we're all doing these days, right? So, um, hi, Sylvie. Hi, Udi and Casey and Raya. Oh, hi, Sina. Emma, Amelia, Oliver. Anna and Alice are ready. Casey's there. Hope all the kids are with you. Jen, hope Zavi's getting in on this one. All right, so um, before we get started, we'll just let a few more, hi. Hi, Loretta. Oh, my sister. Kelly, Heather, ah, oh, you guys are the best. So um, before we get started, I just wanna um, let you guys know that if you decide to do the fun art project that we're gonna go over, um, use the hashtag H-U-M-A from home, which stands for Hofstra University Museum of Art from home. Hi, Simon. Hi, Xander. Hi, Cassidy. Hope you guys are watching. Giovanni, you guys are the best. All right, so I'm going to get started. So we're going to go um, for fun with fine lines. We're going to look at some inspiration art first um, from a really awesome artist named Pearl Fine. Um, and then we're going to use that inspiration piece to create some inspired artwork of our own. All right, so looking at art is one of the best things we do at the museum, at the Hofstra University Museum of Art. Um, I love it as a museum educator. Uh, I love having conversations about art and I love that sometimes people can feel this way about art. They love it, love it, love it. And sometimes people can feel this way about it. They're like, I'm not sure what I'm looking at, especially when it's abstract art. And sometimes people can feel this way about art and that's okay too, as long as it starts a conversation. Hi, Lauren. I'm so glad you joined today. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at this um, piece from Pearl Fine and I want you to just have a reaction to it. So I'm not gonna tell you too much about it. So what I'd like you to do is um, type re your reaction in the chat. Uh, maybe use an emoji or a word that describes how this artwork makes you feel, okay? So we're gonna take a look. This is Pearl Fine's piece called Convolution. It's from 1966. Hi, Lauren. Hey, Chris. And um, so I want you to just type in the chat there how this artwork is making you feel. What's your reaction to it? So um, use an emoji maybe to describe how this artwork is making you feel. Chris Shander is waving at me. I'm gonna wave back, but maybe you can type in the chat. So Jen and probably Zavi are saying so cool. I'm seeing Gabe on there and he's saying, I have some questions maybe about that. Kelly is looking a little dizzy. I love it. I love it. Emma loves it. I knew she would. Alice says a little silly. Lauren Garay is saying cool. Loretta is calling it art casserole. I love it. Art casserole. That's going to be my new favorite term. <laughs> All right. So um, I happen to, you're not going to be surprised. I happen to love this. But when I first looked at it, I thought to myself, I'm not sure what I'm looking at, but there's something about it that I just love, and, and that's okay, that's okay. Cassie loves it too, and maybe you're not sure what you love about it, maybe you have questions about it. So we use these emoji fans in the museum for some of our smallest museum visitors because it gets them talking about the art a little bit more, so that's great. All right, so just a little background on Pearl Fine. Remember, we're using her work here as our inspiration. 
So um, Pearl Fine is considered an abstract expressionist artist. This is why you're kind of looking at this and maybe not giving it a name to what you're seeing. That's okay, that's what abstract art is about. And she um, moved to New York City from Boston when she was a teenager, because she knew that New York is where the art scene was. This was in like the 1940s. And by 1950, she was one of the first women invited to the all-male club of New York school expressionist artists. So she's a very accomplished artist. And this piece is just one of many that she's made. So if you research her a little bit, you'll see that this was a style of art that she was doing at the time. This is from 1966. She also was a professor of art at Hofstra University. So um, look her up, you're gonna see some really cool stuff. All right, so we're having positive reactions to Pearl Fine. So what I love about this and what inspired me to do the artwork that I'm gonna show you today are a couple of things. She uses this grid structure that you can see here underneath her painting. And just imagine that this painting is gigantic. So imagine like a single car garage door closed that's about how big this artwork is. So it looks beautiful when it's hung up in the gallery. And it's part of our Nevertheless She Persisted uh, exhibit that you can see online right now. We have it digitally available to you so you can see a lot of other artwork, including this one. So what inspired me about this artwork were the colors. So some of you said you love the colors. Give me a wave if you um, were replying that you loved the colors. Um, I do too. So one of the things that's super inspiring is she used blue and she used yellow, so a cool and a warm color. She really only used, oh, hey, Kylie. I'm, I was wondering who that was. It's good to see you. Um, she used cool and a warm color and also this black and white and it just pops. I know this, and I'm telling you, it's really, really impressive um, when, it's, when it's shown in its natural state, which is very, very large. So, um, all right, so back to that grid line. So what she did here in this phase that she was going through, she, um, she hand painted this grid line that you see here onto this giant canvas because she wanted to anchor these shapes to the canvas. So she wanted to basically tell us, I know that this is a two dimensional plane. It is anchored, all of my work here is anchored to this grid pattern underneath. But then she added all of these lines and shapes that are sort of creating that idea of movement. So that's something that I'm really inspired by. I'm also really inspired by the black and white stripes that she placed in it. Um, the white shows me this idea of negative space, so that absence of color right next to another form, and I was really inspired by that. And then I just love the geometry of it. I love that when you look at it, you're not only seeing stripes, but you're seeing trapezoids and triangles and all sorts of other unexpected shapes that she got when she put this all together. All right, do we love it? Okay. All right, so um, we're gonna get to the art project now. And I just wanna um, say that whether you're gonna do this right now with me or not, it's gonna be recorded. So you will be able to go to our website at some point to find um, this recording. But I'm gonna demonstrate um, the technique, technique that I'm using. It does remind me of some of Simon Mason's artwork, good friend of mine who does a lot of creative things. So, um, I asked you guys to have some tape ready and remember art is a process and when you're going through this process you might make some mistakes and sometimes those are happy mistakes and sometimes we love the mistakes that we made and then sometimes we make mistakes and we're like Ugh, I don't know about that I'm gonna rework that so we're gonna work on a small um, scale right now and when you kind of um, get the technique down, you're gonna see that you can use this technique in a lot of different places. You can even take it outside. And I know today is a beautiful day, so you might wanna take this um, technique that I'm gonna show you outside, and I'll explain that in a second. So I asked you guys to have some tape. 
So I have examples of tape you might have pulled together. We're all working with limited materials right now. We didn't have time to head to Michael's and buy all sorts of stuff. So anything you have around is good, but you're gonna experiment until you find the materials that you want to use. So I'm gonna say, I don't recommend this clear packing tape. Maybe your parents are packing up a lot of Amazon returns with this right now. Um, I wouldn't use that. You wanna use a tape that is sticky, but not too sticky. So a tape that I found that works really well is um, painter's tape. That's usually like a blue tape. This is a thick width one. I have a thinner width of painter's tape. And I also have electrical tape. Um, not everyone has this. I don't really know why we have it in our house. We don't have an electrician here. However, we have it and it actually works really well. So I found myself using this tape a lot. Um, regular scotch tape, experiment with it. Um, it might not be your tape of choice, but again, you experiment and find out. Okay, so you have your tape, you have coloring materials. Again, anything that you're finding around the house um, you might be emptying out that craft drawer today to find the materials. Um, so you're gonna um, really use any coloring materials that you have. I had colored pencils. Um, today I'm gonna show you a sample that I made using um, these oil pastels that no one had touched in forever and I thought this was a good time to use them. Um, I also use Sharpies, so I combined my coloring materials. I used a Sharpie and I used my oil pastels. You can do that too. You could even use watercolors if you have a set at home. All right. Yay, painters! Shout out to the um, George Washington University painters, which is something that I did in the summers in college. I painted dorm rooms for a living and got paid for it. Best job of my um, life. Yes, Jen, we love washi paint, uh, tape too. That's a, that's a really good um, idea to use washi tape. All right, okay. So um, you're gonna take your white paper and you're gonna fold it in half. That's your first step. Because remember, we're gonna work on a small scale. And then if you decide you love this, you're gonna take it to a bigger scale and I'll show you some examples of that. So first step, fold your paper in half. Okay, then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take a pretty long, um, amount of tape, probably longer than the length and width of your paper, because when you place it on the paper, you're going to um, want it to stick to your surface to keep your paper in place when we do the coloring part of this. So here's my piece that I pulled off. And um, if you can kind of see down at the bottom here, I have one that I already started. So I'm gonna um, continue placing tape on that. And you'll see that I've started just placing the tape onto my paper in kind of an unexpected pattern. I'm not overthinking it too much. I'm really just laying down um, my lines. Now you might think, ooh, this looks pretty cool. I like that the way it is. However, we're gonna have a little surprise at the end, which is the most satisfying part. So this tape is going to disappear and leave us with our finished artwork. So continue placing tape down on your paper in any pattern that you want. You wanna kind of close up as much of this white space as you can, but you do wanna leave little areas of white space because you're gonna color in those white spaces. So I'm gonna do that while you guys are placing your tape on your paper. So I'm gonna take my um, I chose, maybe you wanna limit your color palette too. You might wanna consider using um, black as a color because it does give it that nice um, pop. Oh, Nancy, I'm glad you're having fun, cousin Nancy. Um, and then I chose, I went with Pearl Fine's inspiration and I chose a cool color and two warm colors. So this is like a beige and an orange and these are my oil pastels. So I'm gonna take um, whichever color I want to start with and I'm gonna remember I'm coloring inside my tape lines and the best part about this tape is that you can go over the edge of it and you're not ruining anything by doing that so I'll show you an example I'm gonna color in one area here and this is what my colored in piece looks like but if you look closely because of the tape 
I was able to go over the edges with my color and I don't have to worry about it. So it's kind of weird. You're gonna, you could go over the edges, but your end result is gonna be those crisp, clean, bold lines that Pearl Fine had in our inspiration piece, okay? So after you lay your tape in your pattern, if I were to finish this one, I would continue putting more tape, some at an angle, however you wanna do it. You wanna leave some white space you're gonna color those spaces in, okay? Um, our next step is to, and this is the most fun part, um, it's very satisfying, is to peel the tape off my paper, okay? Now I'm gonna give you some advice. The reason we don't wanna use super sticky tape is because when you start to peel it, you might peel some of the paper off with it. Hi, Caleb. Hey, Mike Scaleri. Um, so you don't wanna do that. And, it, and if you do, you can fix it. And again, remember we're experimenting. Hey, Katie. So um, you want to kind of stick to the tape that you feel will get the job done, but isn't too sticky. So you'll see on this one, I used my electrical tape and I used some of that painter's tape. Hi, Katie. Hey, Maddie, Livy, and Gavin. Hope you're all watching. Um, so I'm going to peel some of this and I'm going to go slowly because I don't want to rip up too much of my paper. Um, so I'm going to go slowly with it and hope for the best. Okay. So, all right. I peeled off one here in the corner. That looks great. These are all the white lines where I've peeled off my tape already. This, um, Hey Melissa. I hope your whole crew is watching. Um, so this electrical tape, I'm gonna peel very slowly. I'm also gonna peel it on an angle because you can kind of see it's getting some of the paper with it. So when that happens, it's best to peel on a flat surface. So I'm gonna hold my paper down again. When that happens, you just kind of do your best. It's probably better to do it on a flat, flat surface and remember to go slow and kind of peel it at an angle so that you're um, limiting the amount of paper that you're gonna pull up with your tape. All right, whoops. See, I got a lot of paper pulled up there. I'm gonna do my last piece. All right, and this is my final project that I made. It's abstract, but it's also kind of really inspired, you can kind of see it, by Pearl Fine's art. And remember, we're not looking to recreate Pearl Fine because she's a unique artist um, who had her own technique and style, but we're inspired by it to create our own artwork here, okay? So inspiration, oh, thanks, Melissa, you're giving me a clap. Thanks, Casey. All right, so um, we have an inspiration piece. We have our final version, but we love this so much in our house that we thought, where else are we gonna do this? So I actually did one and I'll show you right now. Um, and remember, if you, um, if you do this art, post a picture of it to Instagram and use this, hi Sasha, and use this um, hashtag. I miss you too, Kylie. Um, use this hashtag H-U-M-A from home and maybe we'll feature it on our um, social media feed too. All right, so I took a piece of black construction paper and again, I'm using like all the materials that we have around our house just sort of experimenting to see, yes, Simon, you could do the walls, but I can't tell kids watching this to go out and start painting on their walls unless they get their parents' permission. Um, but yes, this would look super cool on a wall, definitely. Um, so I used black construction paper here, and because it's really a dark shade, I decided I'm gonna use light colors to color in my spaces. So um, I actually found our handy bag of sidewalk chalk, which I know a lot of you have in your house, and you're wondering what I'm gonna do with it. Yeah, so no ceilings then, <laughs> um, Katie, all right. So, um, so use your sidewalk chalk because not only can you use that on paper, you could actually do this project outside on a beautiful day like today. Um, you could put the tape 
the um, masking tape on your, this will work really well. Actually, probably any tape outside would work really well um, on a sidewalk or on your driveway if it's one of those black driveways. And you could lay the tape down in your patterns and then use your sidewalk chalk to color in those spaces. So I did that again on a smaller scale. I like to test things out before I bring them to the bigger scale. And um, I did it on black construction paper. All right. So um, I'm kind of curious to see how you guys feel. Type in your chat, do you like the black construction paper version or the white paper version? So black or white, which one do you think? Kind of, I know, the sidewalk chalk idea, get outside, it's gorgeous out. I'm glad you guys all joined me today, but you need to be outside after this. Yeah, the black looks really cool. So um, it's just striking, right? And so this reminded me of a lot, I know it's a tough call, um, a lot of different applications that you could use. Someone just mentioned the walls, which again, ask before you do any of that, but um, you're going to find that this will work well in lots of different um, applications. So one more thing that I'm going to show you, and I hope you really love this, is a final application that I saw on um, Instagram and a friend of mine had posted pictures of her children doing it, but I thought, it could be really inspired by this pearl fine piece. Some of the things that um, she used, the techniques and style that she used in her painting. So for this one, um, I actually found, again, you're kind of like fishing around for what materials you have in your house. I found washable Crayola paint. Again, no one has touched this in my house in a very long time but I added a little water to it, shook it up, and let it sit overnight, and I used washable paint. I'm gonna say it again, washable paint. Don't go doing what I'm about to show you. With any old paint in your house, your parents will not be happy. Washable paint will wash off with quick soap and water. We'll take this paint off of just about any surface. So um, are you ready to see what I did with my washable paint? It's pretty cool. All right. So I'm gonna take you with me. You're in my kitchen, by the way. All right, so I'm gonna take you with me. And again, this was inspired by someone else's idea. I did not come up with this, but my daughter and I, Nora, we had a lot of fun doing it. So this is another thing that you could do with, the, um, with this technique and idea. But we made this. All right, so if you look closely, you'll see that these are our tape lines and these are our areas of color. So we have negative space in the tape lines and that's where you can even see through. And then the color becomes sort of our positive space. And if you um, pull away from it, you can see how beautiful it looks with the sun coming through. So if you have um, a space, like we did this on a sliding door, so it's a nice big window, and we had to keep it high enough because the dog likes to scratch right at this corner to go out, and we didn't want him scratching at the artwork. But um, you could do this on a window. Just make sure, again, that you're using washable paint, okay? All right. Does anyone have any questions about anything that we did today? I hope you loved it. And I hope you get to do some of the um, artwork yourself. And remember that if you want to um, post it onto Instagram, you're gonna use this hashtag, H-U-M-A from home, and you're going to um, show us what you did with um, these uh, techniques and ideas. And remember, these were inspired by um, Pearl Finds Convolution, and you can go onto our Hofstra Museum website and you can see the digital version of the exhibit, Nevertheless, She Persisted, where you'll find Pearl Fine and lots of other um, women artists. Yeah, you can use, you could probably use dry erase markers. Again, test it out, maybe have your Windex um, 
ready, but you could also, um, I also saw someone sent me something where um, they used um, tissue paper to fill in spaces on a window. I'm not sure what they used as glue as the medium to stick it, but so I don't know if I would recommend that, but I, yeah, I would, I would try that. I would totally try that. Um, but if you're gonna use that paint method, just remember you have to use something that's washable and no Sharpie markers on your windows because that will definitely not come off. Um, yeah, it looks like it does. It, 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 it starts to look a little bit like stained glass. But remember, it's like that movement, that feeling of um, positive and negative space that Pearl Fine showed us in her inspiration piece. Okay. All right, guys, thank you so much for joining today. And we hope to see you at the museum when things get back to normal, which we hope is soon. All right, have a great day. Get outside and enjoy the sunshine. See you guys.